Hello, my name is Mary Ogilvie. I'm a librarian and a storyteller. I work at the University of Chicago Laboratory Schools where I tell stories regularly. The story I'm going to tell you today is one of my favorites. It's called The Elephant's Child and it's one of the Just So stories by Rudyard Kipling. One of the reasons I like stories by Rudyard Kipling is that he likes to play with language, and I do myself too. And sometimes he uses words that really don't mean anything particular, just because he likes the way they sound. So as you're listening to the story, if you find there are some words you don't understand, don't worry about it. Just listen to the sounds. If it's important for you to understand a word, to be able to understand the story, I will explain what it means. Okay, so here is The Elephant's Child by Rudyard Kipling. In the high and far off times, O oh best beloved, the elephant had no trunk. He just had a blackish bulgy nose about as big as a boot. He could wriggle it about from side to side, but he could not pick up things with it. But then there was a new elephant, an elephant's child. And he was filled with satiable curiosity. What that means is he asked ever so many questions. He lived in Africa and he filled all Africa with his satiable curiosities. He asked his tall aunt, the ostrich, why her feathers grew just so. And his tall aunt, the ostrich, spanked him with his, her hard, hard claw. He asked his tall uncle, the giraffe, why his skin was so spotty. And his tall uncle, the giraffe, spanked him with his hard, hard hoof. And still, that elephant's child was filled with satiable curiosity. He asked questions about everything. Everything he tasted, smelled, saw, heard, felt. He asked his broad aunt, the hippopotamus, why her eyes were so red. And his broad aunt, the hippopotamus, spanked him with her broad, broad hoof. He asked his hairy uncle, the baboon, why melons taste just so. And his hairy uncle, the baboon, spanked him with his hairy, hairy paw. And still that elephant's child was full of satiable curiosity. Now one day he asked a new, fine question. He asked, what does the crocodile have for dinner? And all his dear families spanked him immediately, saying, Hush in a dreadful tone. And when all of that was over, he went off to find the Colo Colo bird. The elephant's child told the Colo Colo bird, I've been spanked. My, my mother has spanked me. My father has spanked me. All my aunts and uncles have spanked me, including my tall aunt, the ostrich, and my tall uncle, the, babo the giraffe. And still, I want to know, what does the crocodile have for dinner? The Colo Colo bird said with a mournful cry, Go to the banks of the great grey, green, greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees, and find out for yourself. Oh, thank you, said the elephant's child. I will. The elephant's child got a hundred pounds of bananas, the little red, little red kind. He got a hundred pounds of sugar cane, the long purpley kind, and 17 melon, melons, the greeny crackly kind. And then he said goodbye to all his dear families and told them that he was going to the banks of the great grey green greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees, to find out what the crocodile has for dinner. Well, they all spanked him one more time for good luck, even though he asked them most politely, please, to stop. Then, the very next morning, 
the elephant's child set out across Africa. He went from Grahamstown to Kimberley, and from Kimberley to Kama's country. From Kama's country, he went straight north up to the banks of the great grey, green, greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees exactly, as the Kola Kola bird had said. Now, you should know, best beloved, that up until this very week, day, hour and minute, this elephant's child had never seen a crocodile and he did not know what one was like. The first person he saw was a bicolored python rock snake coiled up around a rock on the banks of the river. Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but could you tell me, have you seen a crocodile in these promiscuous parts? Have I seen a crocodile? said the bicolored python rock snake with dreadful scorn. Whatever will you ask me next? Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but can you tell me what does he have for dinner? Then the bicolored python rock snake uncoiled himself from around the rock and whipping out with his scalesome, flailsome tail, he spanked the elephant's child. That is very odd, said the elephant's child. My mother has spanked me, my father has spanked me, all my aunts and uncles, including my broad aunt the hippopotamus and my hairy uncle the baboon, have all spanked me for my satiable curiosity. I suppose this is more of the same. Then, after he had helped the bicolored python rock snake coil himself up around the rock again, the elephant's child went on down the banks of the great grey green greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees. By and by, he trod on what he thought was a log of wood lying right by the water. But really, this beloved, it was the crocodile. The crocodile opened up his eyes and stared at the elephant's child, who said, Excuse me, could you tell me please, have you seen a crocodile here? At that, the crocodile winked one eye like this and said, why do you ask such things? And he lifted his great tail out of the mud at the side of the river. The elephant's child stepped back very quickly and excuse me. My mother has spanked me, my father has spanked me, all my aunts and uncles have spanked me, and even the bicolored python rock snake up the river has spanked me with his flailsome, scalesome tail. If it's all the same to you, I do not want to be spanked any more. Come hither, little one, said the crocodile, winking his other eye, and tell me. Why do you ask such things? For I am the crocodile. And he wept crocodile tears to show that it was true. Then the elephant's child was so excited he was breathless and panting and he said, You are the very one I have been looking for all these long days. Could you please tell me, what do you have for dinner? Come hither, little one, said the crocodile, and I will whisper. So the elephant's child went down to the water and he put his head right down close to the crocodile's mouth. And the crocodile opened his mouth and grabbed a hold of the elephant's child's nose, which up until that very week, day, hour, and minute, best beloved, had been about the size of a boot, black and bulgy. Then the elephant, the crocodile said, speaking through his teeth like this, 
I think today I will begin with Elephant's Child. And the Elephant's Child was much annoyed. And he said, speaking through his nose like this, Let go of me! You are hurting me! And then the bicolored python rock snake from up along the bank called down rash and inexperienced young traveller. If you do not begin to pull with all your might, in my opinion, that large patent leather ulster, by which he meant the crocodile, is going to jerk you into yonder limpid stream before you can say Jack Robinson. That's how bicolored python rock snakes always talk. Then the little elephant's child settled back down on his haunches and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled and the crocodile floundered into the water and he swished with his tail back and forth making the water all creamy. And the crocodile pulled and he pulled and he pulled and the elephant's child's nose began to stretch. And the elephant's child pulled and pulled and pulled, and the crocodile pulled, and pulled, and pulled, and the elephant's child's nose got longer and longer, and it hurt him hideous. At last, the elephant's child felt his legs beginning to slip, and he said, speaking through his nose like this, This is too much for me! And the bicolored python rock snake came slithering down the bank. He wrapped himself around the elephant's child's legs in a double clove hitch. And he said, now, my young friend, we will start to exert some high tension, which just meant pulling. Otherwise, yonder self-propelling man of war with the armor plated upper decks, by which he meant the crocodile, is going to vitiate your future career kill you. That's how python, bicolored python rock snakes always talk. Then the bicolored python rock snake pulled and pulled and pulled and the elephant's child pulled and pulled and pulled and the crocodile swept his tail backwards and forwards like an oar and pulled and pulled and pulled. But the elephant's child and the bicolored python rock snake pulled harder. And at last the crocodile let go of the elephant's child's nose with a plop that echoed all up and down the Limpopo River. The elephant's child sat down most hard and sudden. And then he was careful to say thank you to the bicolored python rock snake for his help. And then he was kind to his poor, pulled nose, which was now nearly five feet long. He wrapped it up in cool green banana leaves and dangled it into the cool waters of the great grey green greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fig trees. What are you doing that for? asked the bicoloured python rock snake. Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but my nose is badly out of shape. I am waiting for it to shrink. Oh, you'll have a long wait then, said the bicolored python rock snake. Some people don't know when they are well off. Well, the elephant's child waited for three whole days. And his nose never got any shorter. And besides, looking at it made him squint. For you will understand, best beloved, the crocodile had pulled the elephant's child's nose out into a really truly trunk, such as all elephants have to this day. On the third day, a fly bit the elephant's child on the shoulder, and with, before he'd even thought what he was doing, the elephant's child smacked that fly and killed it. Vantage number one said the bicolored python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with a mere smear nose. Now, aren't you feeling hungry? 
Yes, I am, said the elephant's child, and before he thought, he reached out his trunk and he plucked a bundle of grass and popped it in his mouth. Vantage number two, said the bicoloured python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with a mere smear nose. Now, aren't you finding it rather hot today? Yes, very hot, said the elephant's child. And before he thought what he was doing, he reached down his tongue trunk into the mud and he got a scooped up a sloopy, sloshy, cool mud pack, which he plopped on his head where it sat cool and nice and trickly behind the ears. Vantage number three, said the bicolored python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with a mere smear nose. Now, how do you feel about being spanked again? Excuse me, said the elephant's child. I would not like that at all. How would you like to spank someone else? Oh, I'd like that very much, said the elephant's child. Well, I think you'll find that new nose of yours just the thing for spanking, said the bicolored python rock snake. Thank you, said the elephant's child. Now I think I'll go home and try it. And then that elephant's child went on back all across Africa, whisking and frisking his trunk as he went along. Whenever he wanted some fruit to eat, he could just reach up into the trees and pluck it without having to wait for it to fall on the ground the way he used to do. When he got lonely, walking all by himself, he could blow down the trunk and make a noise louder than three brass bands. He went specially out of his way to find a crocodile. Uh, he went specially out of his way to find a hippopotamus. And even though she was no relation of his, he spanked her very hard just to make sure that what the bicolored python rock snake had said about spanking was true. At last, one dark evening, he arrived ho home to his dear families. He rolled up his trunk and wandered up, up saying, Good day to everybody. They all said, Hello, come and be spanked for your satiable curiosity. Pooh, said the elephant's child, I don't think you know anything about spanking. But I do, and I'll show you. Then he unrolled his trunk and he knocked two of his brothers head over heels backwards. Oh, bananas, they said. Where did you learn that trick? And what have you done to your nose? I went to the banks of the great grey green greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees. I asked the crocodile what he has for dinner, and he gave me this to keep. It's very ugly, said his hairy uncle, the baboon. Yes, it is, said the elephant's child, but it's very useful. Then he picked up his hairy uncle, the baboon, by the back leg and threw him into a hornet's nest. Then that bad elephant's child pulled feathers right out of his tall aunt, the ostrich's tail. He took his tall uncle, the giraffe, and dragged him backwards through a book thorn bush, and he began to spank all his dear families until they were all very warm and greatly astonished. But he made sure that nobody touched the Colo Colo bird. By and by things got so excited, exciting that his dear families went one by one across Africa to the banks of the great grey green greasy Limpopo River all set about with fever trees to get new noses of their own. And when they came back, nobody spanked anybody anymore. And that, O oh best beloved, is why every elephant you, you'll ever see, and all the elephants you won't see, have a really truly trunk, just like the one the crocodile gave the elephant's child on the banks of the great grey green greasy Limpopo River, all set about with fever trees. So that was The Elephant's Child by Rudyard Kipling. I hope you enjoyed the story and I'll be able to tell you another one another day. Bye.